Hi, I'm Becky Hope. I'm an art teacher here at Penn High School. Welcome to PHM's Fine Arts Academy. I'm going to introduce you to some lessons that we have developed for the Academy using air dry clay from Amico. The teachers have created stampers that we use to stamp into clay and leave a permanent mark on the surface of the clay. We've also developed a beautiful Picasso lesson where we make a mask out of clay and then etch into the surface of the mask after we've painted it to leave a beautiful marked surface. We also have pinch pots that everyone knows a pinch pot, but we have developed a way that you can stain the pinch pots with colorful, bright tissue paper. And our final lesson is a Juan Plensa inspired lesson where the students use a clay mask and press into the surface of the mask with letters and stamps to create a verbal communication. I'm Zach Tate and I'm one of the visiting artists here for the uh, Summer Art Academy at Penn Harris Madison Schools. Um, and I'm going to outline uh, my project I've been working on with the kids for the last week. So what we're going to start out with today is I've got several of these plaster molds uh, that during the session uh, the kids will actually help me fill and do so I'll do a demonstration of how those are filled and uh, some of the processes we'll go through while doing that. To begin the process, large handfuls of clay are thrown onto the platter. This helps pack down the clay so that it is solid. Then the clay is flattened out by hand to fill the platter and pack it on tighter. It is important here that the clay is packed on and distributed across the platter. Pressure must be applied to fill the platter. Instead of using like the potter's wheel, which is, I guess would be like a traditional means or what a lot of kids think that we're doing uh, as ceramic artists, uh, this is a hand building technique. And we're doing what's called a press mold by taking one of these large plaster bats and filling it full of clay, pressing the clay, really compressing the clay in there pretty hard so that way it doesn't crack later on. Slabs are formed by taking a handful of clay and then twirling it around in the hands to create a long piece of clay. It is thrown on the edge of the platter. This gives the platter a strong formation. To finish the platter, the clay is hit continuously. This ensures that all the clay has been packed together and smooths the surface. To add the mask to the platter, the Amico air dry clay has been pressed into a face mold. After it has been packed in, it is slowly removed. A mask is formed. The edges of the mask are then scored to be given texture so that it can grip the surface of the platter. The mask is then laid down on the platter and then outlined. This outline gets scored and wettened. This will help the two surfaces connect and compress together. The mask is then laid down onto the platter and pressed in with the clay on the platter. Then the mask is connected to the platter and the platter is finished. To remove the platter from the plaster mold, the clay must first dry. The Amico air dry clay will need to dry overnight and then the platter can be removed. The platter then can be painted. A simple acrylic paint can be applied in any fashion to add color to the platter. To create a pinch pot, we begin with a small amount of clay, about the size of the palm. Next, it is rolled in between two hands and made into a ball. To turn this into a pot, a thumb is inserted into the middle 
of the ball and then pinched around in a circular motion until a pot is formed. To make a unique pot, textures can be added. This is done with rolling stamps, tools, or any found object. The object is rolled against the clay until the texture shows up. The texture is a nice addition as it will be able to be seen as soon as the tissue paper dries over the texture. Lastly, color is added to the pot. This is done by taking small pieces of tissue paper and laying them against the clay. A paintbrush and water are used to mat down the tissue paper. The tissue paper can be laid down in a pattern or randomly. Either way, a one-of-a-kind design appears. It is important to make sure that the inside and the outside of the pot is covered with tissue paper. This will ensure that there is color covering every part of the pot. As soon as the tissue is matted down, the pot is done. The Amico air dry clay will dry on its own. It should be left to dry overnight so the tissue is given time to stick to the pot. The clay mask is made by taking a plastic face mold and adding a layer of newspaper over the top of the mold. This will help stop the clay from sticking to the plastic. Then the Amico air dry clay is laid over the entire mold, covering the face shape. To begin shaping the face, thumbs are used to indent the eye sockets into the eye area. The shape of a nose is made in two methods. One where the clay is lifted to make a bridge and two small balls of clay are added to make the nostrils. The bridge and the nostrils are then molded together to create a nose shape. Or the second method where a finger shaped piece of clay is squished with two fingers at the end and a nose forms. The thumb is then used to indent the nostrils and the nose can be added to the mask. Before anything is added to the mask though, water must be laid down so that it sticks together properly. It is important that the nose lays halfway between the eyes and the bottom of the chin so that it follows the normal face shape. The mouth is then added right beneath the nose. A bigger piece of clay is used for the top lip. Any lip shape can be made and then laid onto the mask, but water must be applied first. Once the top lip is on, then the bottom lip can be added. This is a crucial step because it expresses a lot of emotion. The mouth can be opened or closed. Teeth or tongue can be added. It is the art maker's choice. The eyeballs are then added. It is a small amount of clay rolled between the hands into a ball. These fit right into the eye sockets. Make sure to add water so that the eyes stay in place. To create eyelids, tiny long pieces of clay are put around the eyeball and then smoothed out into eyelids over this eyeball. For the eyebrow, a large piece of clay is formed into whatever brow shape is desired and placed above the eye. Again, this is wetted down with water before it is placed on. Once all the facial features are finished, they are pressed into the mask so that the face is complete. 
A pupil can be added to the eye with the tip of a paintbrush. To add a signature look to the mask, found objects can be added. These can be small toys, tools, household items, anything that can be added or fit onto the mask. It can take place of the eye or the nose or the brow. This is the art maker's choice. The object should be secured into the clay by surrounding the clay and firming the object into it. Ears can also be added. These are placed between the eye and the nose. The ears should be in the shape of half a heart. The side of the face should be scored and wet down, then the ear can be added. Earrings can also be put on at this point. These can also be made out of found objects, whatever the art maker desires. Hair may also be added. It can go on top of the head or on the sides. It can be any texture, straight or curly. The surface should be scored and wet down before the hair is put on. Once the details are complete, the mask can be painted using a simple watercolor palette or acrylic paint. Any colors can be used here. The hair, the eyes, the brows, and the face can all be different colors. It will need to dry overnight for the colors to stay on. For a little extra flair, stamps can be added onto the mask. They can be letters or numbers or images, anything that the art maker wants. The art makers can also make these stamps themselves out of Amico clay. To create stamps, we start with a sphere of Amico air dry clay which is then rolled into a cylinder. This can be done by rolling the sphere of clay between the two palms. A handle needs to be formed. To form this handle, the art maker can take their fist and press gently on the sides. This will form a handle to their hand configuration. To make a flat surface for the stamp, the art maker will press the bottom of the cylinder against their palm. This will form a flat and wide surface where a design can be made. A design can be made on the underside of the flat surface. This area will be used as a stamp. A design can be made with a pencil, paper clip, or any found object. It is the art maker's choice on what they design. The stamp shapes can range from a classic cylinder with a flat side to a cylinder with a stamp on both sides or a cube with stamps on six sides. If the art maker wants to carry their stamp with them or hang the stamp off their backpack, a hole can be added to the top of the stamp where a string or chain can be put through and the stamp can be carried around easily. 
To do this, stick a pencil through the stamp. Make sure the pointed end faces away from the body. Once the stamp dries overnight, it can then be used to press into small, round pieces of clay, creating medallions with the art maker's own design. Holes can then be pressed through these medallions and chains added so the art maker can carry these as well. An additional stamp design is a ring, which the art maker can wear with their own symbol on top of the ring. Anything can be made with these stamps.